I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. Oh, thank you. thank you so much. Well, you may be seated. This week, I've had a great experience. It was very intense. I was present as part of the credentialing team of Unity, and I had the opportunity for candidates a day from Monday through Saturday. It was very, very intense, 45-minute lunch break, and we have some really gifted individuals who are in our Unity movement. In June, we're going to ordain 28 new ministers. <laughs> Everyone that was up for credential is getting that certification. Ah, oh, such quality. And since I was entering a week of sit in front of the computer for hours, I knew I wasn't going to be able to prepare a talk, so I called our minister emeritus, Reverend Sandra Van Gillenban, and she said, I would love to serve in that way. So <laughs> let's welcome Reverend Sandra. Thank you, Gary. Reverend Gary. I would tell you, I have participated in what Gary is, uh, did this last week, but I only did half of what he did and was exhausted at the end of each period. It's very intense. These are people who really want to do good and and make sure everything looks right, and that Gary is impressed and doesn't say anything that you know might stop them from becoming ministers. So it's a it's a real privilege, and it's also a lot of responsibility. So I really respect you for taking today off because it's it's a big thing. I think that what you've done is that you've put grace into your life. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk about grace today. I'm going to talk about grace over perception. So the perception might be that Gary is tired, or Reverend Gary is tired, or that he doesn't have the energy or whatever, but the truth is Reverend Gary has stepped into grace and is willing to take care of himself. So I say kudos to you. So here we are in this Lenten uh, journey, and we have the opportunity to look at how Jesus traveled and what he did in making his spiritual awakening broader, grander. He, he moved into the maturity of spiritual awakening. And this is where we all are as well. But you see, our way shower, Jesus, has already gone before us to show us the way, to show us that we don't have to do this without a guide. Have you ever been somewhere and you've been on a hike or something and all you wanted was a guide to tell you which path to take because you're not sure? So we have that. We have a way shower that has done that. Myself, I've ended up in places like, you know, down in the bog with the cattails and the reeds. And it's kind of interesting down there, but there's usually lots of bugs and it smells. And I don't, I don't particularly want to be there. So in preparing this talk... I think that it's important to see where we're going for Easter. So our preparation for Easter invites us to awaken and rise the spiritual consciousness of the I am and man or woman, which has been dead in trespasses and sins and buried in the tomb of materiality. Now remember, to take a deep breath, remember that all sin means, it's an archery term, means you missed the mark. You know how many times I've missed the mark? I'm not a good archer. Uh, actually, I don't think I'm very good at anything that requires me to aim and, and throw. So, <laughs> or shoot. So we're not, we're not back at that old sin that we may have gotten hit over the head with when we were young. We're talking about we attempted, and we missed the mark. And we've been buried in the tomb of materiality. That's that place where we think everything that's around us is real, when we know that much of it is our perception of it. 
So we'll talk more about that. People ask me many times, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? It was a hard death. Why would a loving God do that? And I say, well, let's think about that for a moment. And we're going to look at that. So, in the world today, there are people who suffer. I know this, you know this, you've heard people. You may be one of them that have discomfort in your life. You may wonder why God would let these things happen. So the journey is just that. Let's look at our perception and see if we can call on a new perception. We experience life most often from our feelings, from that place within us where we look at things, we feel something, and we go with that feeling, feeling like it's the truth, versus knowing that there's so much more than what we are feeling in that moment. Uh, we forget our divinity. Ever forgotten your divinity? Ever forgotten the truth of who you are? So we get to remember that and call forth that divinity where we can maintain an inner peace. See, that divinity helps us maintain an inner peace. So Jesus did this journey, and now we're going to look at some of it with metaphysical eyes. The first thing was he was tempted in Matthew uh, 4, 1 through 11. He was tempted. Now, what's that mean? Well, there was, he was led by spirit, so he listened to spirit, listened with that, that inner hearing. He went into the desert where things were dry and dusty, and he was tempted by the devil. The devil? Is that that red thing that comes in with pitchforks? I don't think so. So Charles Fillmore, one of our co-founders, says that the devil is a mass of thoughts, negative thoughts, that have been built up by our human consciousness. It has been held up and created through our consciousness for generations and generations. And do you look to God for the good? Or do you groan and moan under the stress and strain of the day? For in doing that, what it means is that we are worshiping that negative energy, that negative peace that we call Satan or the devil. It's not God when we get tied up in the, the negative. We're just in that consciousness of pulling ourselves and the world down. So it is our birthright, our birthright to be happy, to be successful, to be free of stress. And I'm going to repeat this. It is our birthright to be happy, to be successful, to live in joy. It is our birthright to be healthy, to find those ways which we can center and let our bodies do the work that is to be done by allowing the Christ Spirit God to move through us. So life can seem hard, and we can think that there is a devil in the world, but really we have a state of consciousness adverse to divine good. And the important thing is there it can be changed. That consciousness can be changed. So the next thing that happened to Jesus was that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and I'm sure that he was pretty hungry. And the devil said to him, command these stones to become loaves of bread. And Jesus replied, eh, not having any of it, it is written that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. So in the introduction, Reverend Gary said something about the words that we speak. The words that we hear when we're listening to that divine hearing and meditation. That's what we're talking about. We hunger, we thirst. We hunger and thirst for the knowing of the Christ presence that's within us. 
And it's important to take a breath, to breathe, to come to that place where we receive spiritual food, spiritual food in our listening. Well, then the devil, never giving up, I mean, not giving up for a while anyway, took Jesus to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. And he said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. Oh, really? You're going to prove that you can be thrown down. And he says, you will com command his angels concerning you, and you will, lift, you will lift up in their hands. You'll be lifted up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So if you jump off, if you fall down off of the highest place of the temple, you're gonna, your angels are going to swoop in and help you out. And we know that this is true. We have angels in our life. We see things happening like that. But Jesus said, it is written, you will not put the Lord, your God, to the test. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of something we do occasionally, right? But that's not, aren't we usually disappointed when we do that? Even if we get what we want, we feel that lack of, oh, we didn't do that exactly right. We're trying to test God. I certainly have. So the devil took Jesus to the very highest mountain, and he showed him all of the kingdoms, all the goodness, all the splendor that was there. And he said, all of this I will give you. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. Bow down, worship me. Jesus said, get away, go on, go away, Satan. For it is written, that worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Oh, you mean I need to let go of serving fear, serving material things? I need to let go of all that I get tied up with and serve God. Yes, that's what it means. So Jesus sent him away. And what happened at that moment? For the angels came. And they attended him. Don't you find that? When you've done what you want to do in a way that you're following God's guidance, you find yourself surrounded by angels, loved ones, people that are there for you to support you in your desires and your moving forward, in your journey. So the devil was looking for weakness in Jesus. He was looking for Jesus to want the power. Sometimes we want power, but he wasn't having any of that. He resisted. What he did was he stepped into grace. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. That is the real redeeming, transforming power came to a man and through the work that Jesus did in establishing for the race, a new and higher consciousness in the earth. I had to go back and check that was in the earth, not on the earth. It's in the earth. That's more encompassing, you know. I also want to go back to the word race. So we're not talking about uh, race in terms of ethnic groups. We're talking about humankind. And if Charles Fillmore was writing today, I feel certain that he would be using humankind and not race. So grace comes through the work that Jesus Christ has done. And we can enter into the consciousness by faith in the inner spirit of the law that he taught and practiced. Again, Jesus showed us the way. He showed us the way. He gave us all that we need to do. And I'm telling you, if you've ever really wondered, if you've ever read the Bible and been concerned about some of the stuff it says, Go buy a red letter only Bible. Read only the I mean, read only that that is in red letters. Read it. They actually have Bibles that are just that today, just the words of Jesus. If you read that, you find a loving, kind experience. So I invite you to uh, begin the transformation. Step into the grace of God. Allow that thought, the thoughts that we get that. Uh, consciousness, that human consciousness that goes around. Do people come up to you and go, I'm so tired of the pandemic. Life is so bad. I feel the 
and just go on and on. That is human consciousness. When we can remember that it is a glorious day out there. We're going to have a glorious workshop this afternoon. When we can remember those things and be grateful. Be grateful in the midst of all that's going on. We are in grace. That is where grace is. So grace came through Jesus. And yet, in our humanness, in that human consciousness, we have our perceptions. And it is our perceptions that lead us into thinking different things. So, what do you see up there? People. Some, some people see two people. What do other people see? A chalice. Perception. We see differently with our human eyes. You know, I know this, and I've used this many times, and I look at it, and I have to look for the people because I see the chalice. I see that every time, and I have to spend some time on it. Perception is that place where we are judging from our own experience. So it's not about what we look at that matters. It's about what we see, what we see when we look. We can interpret things in many different ways. But how do you wish to interpret things? So let's look at Jesus on the cross. That question has just come up and come up. People say, I don't like Jews. Jews killed Jesus. And I'm always like, oh, God. First of all, the Jews did not kill Jesus. I want to make that clear. It was Romans that killed Jesus. Second of all, Jesus was Jewish. And love and respect for every world tradition and Jews, yes, we love them and respect them because they are in good, indeed good people, and Jesus came from that lineage. So let's just get over anything we have about that. What do you say? Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> grace. Grace is, in, is to remind us to be true to ourselves to be true to that place where it is written that we find freedom, true to ourselves where it can be grounded in the knowing. Brene Brown said something I found pretty amazing for this particular time, and, and to me it sounds like grace. She says, to never look away from pain. Do not look away, do not look down, don't pretend not to see hurt. Look people in the eye, even when their pain is overwhelming. And when you are hurting and in pain, find people who can look you in the eye. Look you in the eye. We need to know that we're not alone, especially when we're hurting from the dehumanization of the trans laws here in Texas to the invasion of Ukraine, there's pain. I know this. You know this. I know many of us are hurting right now for different reasons. Let's not look away. Let's not fail to see the truth in others. Let's not fail to see the Christ, the Christ that lives in you. The Christ that shines from you. Let grace overcome perceptions that are too much for us. If we feel overwhelmed, call for grace. Step in to the flow of grace that moves through the matrix of life. So we see things differently when we trust the divine. We believe that God is in the midst of all the activity in life if we're willing. It requires us to be willing to direct our minds. And what's really great is we have the opportunity to do that. Our minds are willing and able to change upon request. Grace. Grace comes from the word kairos. And it means that God has an unlimited, unmerited love for us. 
And it is the activity of God that works in the universe. It is grace that brings us to freedom. So I invite you to speak the word grace. Grace. Say it, just say it, just kind of like a really good word. Grace. Grace. I'll say it with some energy. Grace. How does that feel for you? You feel a little better after you say grace? Grace. Anytime we want to, we can say the word grace. And that is a stepping in to that energy. It is a remembering of who we are. We have received grace. And all we have to do is become aware of it. So there is in uh, 1 John 16, from his fullness we have received grace upon grace. Have any of you ever wondered what that means? Grace upon grace? What's that mean? We're going to have grace inside the grace inside the grace? Yes. It means that there was the original grace that came back in the very beginning. And Jesus the Christ has added to that grace. So now we have more grace. And we can enjoy that and and choose to be there. We can choose grace over the perception of lack or the perception of fear. The definition of grace is God's life, power, and righteousness given to us by unmerited favor. And it is through grace that God works effectively to change our hearts and our lives. It is through grace that our hearts remain softened, that we do not become bitter, that we are free from bitterness. It is through grace that we love and that we're pure and that we remain whole. It is through grace that our body knows how to heal. It is through grace that we can find a peace. Activating grace of the indwelling Christ, we are attended to by the angels, by the angels and our teachers. We are strengthened. We can always rise by choosing grace over perception. My Angelou says, you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but like dust, I'll rise. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. We can rise in stepping into God's grace. You see it all around you. We can call it forth by saying thank you. And it was in important that Jesus be willing to be crucified so that we can have the resurrection. And in that resurrection, we have an example of humankind living on. Jesus continues to live on and on and on as we do, as we do, when we hold to that grace. So as a way shower, Jesus has had the opportunity to demonstrate to us to live in grace and to trust God. Even when we don't understand it, even when it seems hard, it's there. It is absolutely there. So I invite you to let your light shine. Let your light shine before all. And from the Course in Miracles that I picked up during the time between talks today, Course in Miracles. Nothing real can be a threat. Nothing unreal exists. Therein lives the peace of God. And so it is. And now we will meditate. I have some wonderful music.
I invite you to take a deep, deep breath. Let it out. Allow yourself to be here now. Allow your thoughts and your head that's going around to drop into your heart space. Just be here now and recognize that in this safe place, that you are surrounded by angels, teachers, friends, that you are protected. Just feel, feel those surrounding you with love, infusing you with love, infusing you with trust and grace. Allow yourself to visualize, to visualize a matrix that have streams of energy running through. The energy of grace, the energy of love. Just step into that flow and receive. There is only one presence and one power. We can be free right here, right now. As we relax even further, we breathe with awareness of the in breath and the out breath. As we journey, as we increase our awareness of our spiritual maturity, as we look for the road signs to help us stay on the path of least resistance.
feel a sense of peace that moves through our bodies. A sense of love that fills us to overflowing. A sense of knowing our light. Feeling our light and opening, softening and opening to the full brightness of who you are. Enjoy it. Bring it into your awareness as you return to this time and space. Bring the awareness of your light, your grace, your love into this room now. Let it come in as you gently open your eyes and join in affirming this affirmation of grace. Let's do it three times. Grace upon grace overcomes my perception. All is well. Grace upon grace overcomes my perception. All is well. Grace upon grace overcomes my perception. All is well. And so it is. 